Hello everybody, how are we doing today? Today I'm going to be cooking hamburger steak with gravy. I'm gonna try to shoot it Southern style, kind of like uh, we grew up with all the time. And for you that knows uh, hamburger steak or hamburgers with gravy and onions, uh, a staple, always a staple growing up. It's just something that we always ate. So today though, I have buffalo meat. It's 8515. So I'm doing bison. I figured <clears throat> I'm gonna try something different, try something new, how it turns out. And I'm gonna show you, you always hear people talking about working their meat. That's getting in there and basically doing this. There's a better way to kind of keep the air in. If you stick your fingers down, you'll see that I put holes in it and then it's just taking it and basically folding it over. And that's all you pretty much do. You're keeping the air in it, this way you don't have a a hard hamburger or anything like that. <clears throat> I'm doing mine in a cast iron pat pan. Today this is my lodge. And then I have corn and I'll be having some um, mashed potatoes going. And that's what we ate pretty much growing up. So let me show you as far as your hamburger meat's concerned. Kind of roll it. Make them as big or as thick as you want. I'm going to try to get four patties out of this thing. So that's what I'm going to try to do. And just roughly uh, four minutes each side. You can tell your pan's nice and hot when you hear the sizzle. I like to use gloves when I cook, usually I have two on. But today, just for contrast, I'm going to wear one. And if you take a look here, you'll see the hamburger slide. That's because I have that nice and cured. I'll also be doing a review of one, possibly two items that I bought recently. One is going to be an XOXO um, flat whisk that I've never tried before, but I've seen people use them. So I would like to know a little bit more about them and see how it works using them. So normally you use a wooden spoon or a metal spoon, usually this a wooden spoon. Uh, you could also use silicone spoon if you like. And in the pound they go. Uh, as long as it's not overly spattered, I'm just at about medium, and I can turn it up to medium high. Um, other things I have standby, just so you know, is I have uh, flour, and that's what I'm going to be making my gravy with. Um, you can use cornstarch, or add a little bit of cornstarch into your flour, but honestly, I recommend just using the flour. That's what you do. You kind of have to cook it. And you'll see once I get there that I'll cook it in with the fat that you see that's around here. So that's how I'm gonna end up making my gravy. Now I do have um, beef, I need some beef stock. So that way, this way, once I go to make my gravy, there'll be beef stock in it. I'm doing 16, ounces of beef stock. And then as I add my flour, I'll be cooking that in. And then normally you would use a sweet onion, Valdalia onion, a white onion. You can use whatever onions you want, but today I am using green onions. Fresh from our garden. So, <clears throat> And of course, obviously, if you have a garden and you have onions, by all means. So I'm also going to do, and I will say this, this is an Ozark spoon. Picked it up at Walmart. I actually ended up picking up two of them. These are so good, it has a little bit of a flex. They're not overly big. And I'm gonna be making, even though I don't have real potatoes with me, uh, instant mashed potatoes, but I can tell you these spoons are worth the money. 
I use these a lot in the kitchen and they come in really, really handy for everything. I'm also going to be using today, which I reviewed before, if you go to my page, this is an all clad. And this is, I was telling about spatulas, this is good. If you're going to buy some really good kitchen utensils that you don't want to keep buying because they wear out, all clad. I'm not sponsored by anybody. All this is all mine, everything I bought. This is the Good Grip OXO flat that I'm going to be trying today to see how well it works. I know some people use them. I want to see how it does. I might be integrating at least with a wooden spoon in the beginning just to be able to get what I want around and then I'll be going to this and see how this works. So with that said, I guess I probably should find my wooden spoon. See, real life kitchen, I'm telling you. It just goes to show you, not everything goes as planned. I have, oh, here it is. My little wooden spoon. Now normally we want this to be, as you can see, it was starting to brown. We want these good and nice and brown. That's, uh, that's going to give you a nice prep and your little crunch when you go to eat. Just like that, maybe a little bit more. The wife likes hers at a, about a medium rare to a medium. And yes, do be careful because it does flatter. I do have a splatter ring. And there you go. Also in the back, I have my corn. I like using glass. It's a lot easier to clean than it, uh, it is sometimes. You can let them soak if you need to. So I do have like visions and coining work for glass. Um, as long as you don't put them on medium high and high, you'll never have a problem with these and breaking or anything. So. Corels. I get corels because they don't chip. Uh, if things have a tendency of falling in my own hands and they're light. So I like using these. I know everybody you probably shouldn't be doing that. So how's that? In the background, you're going to hear Grandson Wes. And as the white pans to the right, you're going to see Jenny. That's her rope -a and she loves it. And of course, so does the baby. So between them, they both fight for it. Now, as far as seasonings are concerned for your burgers, season them however it is you like your hamburgers. Uh, whether that's using any kind of uh, McCormick's or uh, just regular salt and pepper. You can do whatever it is you like, however it is you like. Um, I use McCormick. Uh, 
Montreal steak seasoning. But for those, this is the hamburger one. These are really good in making hamburgers, I tell you. I have a whole boatload of these. I do full videos. I'm not into video editing. I like people to see what I'm doing and how long things take. Um, and how I adjust. So right now I sit at medium high. I do up the high as long as I've got my splatter on. And then this way everything's good and I can always come back down. Because I'm also looking for the patina on the end when I take out the steak. You know, the, the little bits and stuff that kind of stick. I kind of want that there because I want that to be able to mix into the, uh, into the flour. You can see how nice the spatula works. Now this is where we're going to start adding in our flour. Now you don't want to over add the flour. Because all you basically you want to do is you just basically want to cook it. You don't want to burn it, so if it looks like it's going to burn, turn it down. It's okay. One thing about cast iron, cast iron holds its heat. Okay, now with that done, I'm going to transfer over to the new wisp. And we're going to see how that works. So with it flipped down, big side down, I will say good for scraping. The other side will be when I go to make the gravy. You just want to cook it for a couple of minutes and so you don't want it to burn. And you want to be able to get the bits off the bottom. You can see all the bits there. So now I'm going to add in my onions. Yeah, actually, it's a good little wisp. I would say um, if you would like to try it for the money, it's worth buying. Now I'm going to pour in my liquid. Oh yeah, good whisk. You can see how it's starting to turn a little brown. Put a little 
little salt and pepper. Now, if it gets away from you and it gets too wet, you can add more flour in. You just gotta let it let it cook its way in. Look at that, how that pulls away from the side. Mama. Either both sides, I'm using it both ways. Works really nice. Oh, it's got a good flavor. See how I got the bubbles going. It's a big pan, so sometimes I move it to the side, you'll see how I get the other sides of boiling as well. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to transfer the hamburgers right back in. They can do their thing. And... But I'm going to use my whisk. I'm going to get that box to boiling. So you can see the gravy, how well the gravy is. Now I'm going to shut it off because in cast iron, cast iron stays nice and hot. And you don't have to worry about it. See how that gravy just kind of rolls right there? And that's what we want. Just a nice, not overly thick. You can make it as thick as thin as you like. This is how we're going to have ours. Good whisk. I like this. I'm glad about it. Now, as you see, I didn't end up using all of mine because there's only going to be two of us, so I don't need to make a ton of gravy. But I wanted to make sure I had enough for the video. There's my corn. But not least, every good set of mashed potatoes needs butter. And with that said, thank you very much for watching the video. Once again, this is a Good Grips OXO Flat Wisp. And this is the Ozark Trail. You can find it at Walmart in the camping area. And I'll show you what I mean once I get this whisk out.
perfect for mashed potatoes. So you can see it's a little flimsy there, but for dishing out, definitely perfect. Even for the corn. Thank you very much, everybody. And be safe and happy. And feel free to look at all my other videos. Uh, like and describe. Uh, prescribe, if you like. But at least go ahead and enjoy some of the other videos I have. Like I said, I'm just a normal person. I just do normal things. So with that said, thank you very much. And have yourselves a very safe day.